So whilst we can't break out of our physical space right now, we can break out of the mentality of thinking that we need more gear to be better musicians. Sometimes we get stuck in a rut, playing the same pattern over and over again, struggling to find new ways to spice up those patterns with different techniques or join them to new patterns, create new licks. But that's okay, because that sort of thing literally happens to everyone. And it's why I'm gonna show you a couple of cool little tricks that will give you some new patterns to play with and have you playing all over the fretboard. What I've learned in isolation is that some of the material stuff that I thought I needed isn't necessary. The stuff I've got is enough. And what I could be doing is experimenting with new ways to work with the tools that I've got. How well do you know your instrument? Be honest. A good musician plays well, but a great musician has a constant curiosity for their craft. If you don't know pentatonic minor scale already, go check out this video I did called Master the Pentatonic Scale in 10 minutes. It will teach you five different shapes, same scale, covering all of the fretboard so that you can Do you know what that is? Fretboard police coming around because I know too many shapes. Hmm? Is it the fretboard police? Both of these runs that I'm going to show you take those different positions of the same scale and moves through them over two strings rather than using all six. Because you can learn five other shapes and end up just playing within each of those boxes. This kind of breaks the wall between them. We're going to do them both in C minor. And if you stick around to the end as well, I'll show you something really cool, a third little bonus trick. We can actually join the first and the second together and kind of splice them in the middle and make a really cool lick. That takes us all the way from the first fret to like 16th fret, and we don't have to break at all. So let's take the top four notes descending of a C pentatonic minor scale. We can actually also play them here. So it's the same notes, different strings. Gives us a different tone, different feel, and a different attack when we pick them. This is the pattern. We're gonna start on the eighth fret of the high E with the third finger, and then go back to the six with the index and do the same on the B as well. Eight, six, eight, six. And this is our rhythm. You'll also notice me sliding into that first note. That's because as we climb up between the shapes, you're gonna find yourself naturally sliding in because we're coming from below. The second pattern goes to the 11th fret of the E, and then the eighth fret, and then the same on the B. Same pattern. Just different frets. Third one, we go up to fret 13 and 11. Same on the B. So these first three, really easy to remember it's the same thing each time. For the next one, we slide up to 15 on the E and then go back to 13. Then we hit 16 on the B and then 13. So we go up an extra fret. For the last one, we go up to the 18 on the high E 
back to 15, 18 on the B, and then 16 on the B. After that 16 on the B string, we can hit the 17 on the G with the second finger, and that's the note C. So we end up resolving on the root note. So you'll notice that the lowest note that I hit from the new position was the same as the highest note from the previous one, and vice versa. You've got these little musical walls between each shape, and the wall shape is always gonna be the same, and we're just connecting them and moving up the fretboard. Here it is slow. second one we're going to look at actually starts to use notes from the natural minor scale as well. It's in C minor again, but this time we're going to be on the G and the B strings. We start down here on the first fret of the G with our index finger and we hammer on to the third fret. Then we move to the first fret of the B and hammer on to the third fret again. Go to the second finger on the third fret of the G, and then back to the index finger on the B on the first fret. From there, we're going to take our third finger on the third fret of the G and slide that into the five, but we want to hear both notes. We don't just want to go. From there, we're going to hammer on our index finger from the third fret to the second finger on the fourth fret of the B. Go back to the G, third finger and then back to the B index. You can already hear how using semitones, the major second, the minor six, is making it darker, more dramatic. Hopefully you can see the pattern start to emerge and we're just using the different positions of the same notes across the same two strings. Now we slide from the five on the G to the seven stretch back to four with the index finger on the B, and then hammer with the second finger to the six. Go back to the seven, and then back to the B with the index again. Those two patterns are identical apart from we're stretching one more fret. Next, we slide from the seventh fret of the G to the eighth semitone, Go to the six on the B with the index, hammer to the eight. Back to the eight on the G, and then the six on the B. Now we're back to shape one of the natural minor scale or pentatonic minor scale. We're gonna slide from the eighth fret of the G with the second finger to the 10, hit the eight on the B, and then hammer third finger to the 11. Back to the 10, and then back to the eight. Into the next one, sliding from the 10th fret of the G with the second finger to the 12. And then we hammer the 11 on the B to the 13. Back to the 12 on the G. And then back to the 11 on the B. And if you are struggling with any of them, just link two of them together. You might learn something new from doing that because there you can see me sliding back. I wasn't doing that before. You might learn something new. This is the point. Trying new things, messing around with them, moving them in different ways. You're gonna learn new licks and spice up your playing. The last pattern we're gonna learn will bring us back to basically where we started, but the octave above. So we slide from the 12 on the G to the 15. And then we're going to go from 13 on the B with the index hammer to the 15. Hit the 15 on the G again with the second finger. Back to the 13 this time and hammer to the 16. I like to hit the 15 on the high E there. And then finish on the 13 on the B. It's the note C, so we resolve to the root note again. 
All together, you should have something that sounds like this. Now, if you remember at the beginning, I said, if you stick around, I'll show you something really cool, which was linking the first and the second runs together. What's even more awesome is that you actually can get two or three extra licks out of just linking them together, maybe even four. So we start at the bottom of the second run that I showed you, play it exactly the same. And stop here when it goes seven, eight. So instead of sliding up to the next position, we actually just hammer on. And we've got the same pattern over the first shapes that I showed you, if that makes sense. So instead of going, we're going. Same notes, we're just using the second pattern. Once you get it down, it just kind of rolls. So what we do now is slide from the eighth fret of the B and then using the notes that I showed you before, we just play the second pattern. All I do at the end here, one of my little licks that I always play, we go from the 16 on the B to the 13, then I hit the 15 on the G, and then go back to the 16 on the B, and then the 13. Kind of Eric Johnson inspired. Second bonus lick, you can do the exact same thing again. Now when you get to the eighth fret of the E, you can just go back into that first pattern if you want. And again, we've just gone from the first fret of the G string in the key of C minor, all the way up to fret 18. And we didn't have to break stride or jump we fluently moved through like seven or eight different positions and it looks cool, sounds pretty awesome. Just because I love you, ah, oh, how sweet. Just because I love you, for extra bonus licks, if you take those patterns and apply them to the box shapes, maybe you can now move through them in a way that we haven't done before. <laughs> See, we've created something new. So let's say I'm down here in the key of C, I'm improvising. And I want to get to... to the high part up here. I could use that pattern I learned. to get all the way up to the high E string. And it sounds really cool. You don't always have to link patterns together in order to get from one place to the other. You can do sudden movements, you can do what you want. But I'm just showing you some techniques and methods um, that will help you expand your playing and discover new things using the tools and skill set that you've already got. It's important to remind ourselves of the levels of musicianship. For me, they go something like this. One, learn the basics, your notes, 
chords and rhythm. Two, own the fretboard, improvise, experiment and get things wrong to become flexible and learn from your mistakes. And three, master your techniques, vibrato, slides, bending, bending in tune, I can't stress that enough, hammer-ons and pull-offs to help communicate the emotion of the song. I know it's a tough time for us all. Which is why I hope that I've inspired you to be creative and curious. I mean, because ultimately, that's what it takes to be as awesome as me.